G'day guys and welcome to another Fix It Fingers Quick Fix. Today we're going to be painting a feature wall. Now straight up I'm a handyman, I am not a professional painter and the way a professional does this is going to be different to the way a DIYer does this. The good news is if you're watching this you're probably a DIYer too and not a professional. Before we go any further let's quickly cover the two things you don't need to do this. One, experience. This is a pretty straightforward job and anyone as long as you're careful can knock it over relatively easily. Two is one of these. Now, don't get me wrong, I do actually really like this tool and I've got a video on exactly how I learned to use it, but if you watch that, you'll see why for a single wall in a bedroom, in this case, that is completely and utterly unnecessary. Save your time, ignore the spray gun. These are the things you're gonna to need to get this job done. Right, first up, you wanna protect the areas that aren't gonna get paint on them. This is what I use as a drop sheet. You can buy dedicated paint sheets. I have one of those, not gonna bother with it today. And some good quality tape. The blue branded tapes tend to be better. Don't be a tight ass on the tape front. Get yourself some of the blue stuff. Nice big wide roller is gonna get through your work fairly quickly. Guess what color my last wall was. You will probably still need a brush of some description for little bits of touch up. This is an edging tool and is my first really big tip for doing walls. They're not very expensive, even on one wall, trust me, when you see this thing in action, you're gonna want one. It saves so much time, it's worth the few bucks to pick one up. Also for a few dollars, pick up one of these little edge guys. Handy thing to have. You will also, of course, require paint and a way to mix it. If you get these aerated little paint stirrers, again, a few dollars from the big box shop, or if you own a drill for about the same price, you can pick up one of these mixing sticks. Trust me, once you've used it, you will never go back to the old handheld stirrer. And lastly, of course, you need paint. You may also need to consider an undercoat and primer. We'll take a look at that in a second. And you'll probably also want a small step ladder to get to those hard to reach places. Here is the victim for today. My boring white bedroom. First thing is to get your protection down on the floor so the paint doesn't end up on the carpet and apply your blue tape masking to the boundary between the feature wall and your regular walls. Don't forget to cover up any power points. Now, I've been really lucky with the wall behind me. I had one tiny scratch just above my head, which I've had to put a coat of undercoat primer on just to cover up that dark mark. You may not be so lucky, and I'm not going to go into wall prep. It's a whole nother topic. If you're going over a dark color, you're going over a glossy paint, or the paint's really crap and old, you may need an undercoat slash primer, and you may want to consider going grey. Ask the guy or girl at your paint shop based on the paint that you're intending to use as your top colour because sometimes a grey undercoat is going to give a truer representation of your colour than the standard white. Either way, today I've lucked out, I can go straight on to getting the pretty colour on the wall. Speaking of paint colour, there are two decisions you have to make. One of them easy, one of them more difficult. If you don't really care too much about the exact color, my biggest tip that I can give you is when you go to your big box store, Bunnings here in Australia, they have a discarded paint section. In other words, colors that were slightly off what somebody else ordered, they return them and now they're sitting for sometimes half the price. And let's face it, paint is really expensive. And if you can get one that matches what you think you want, then you're gonna save an awful lot of dough. Now, on the more personal choice of colour, obviously the rainbow is open to you. And the old way of getting your different sample pots like we have here and painting them on the wall, not the best way. Firstly, we're going dark, which would mean if I put a colour on I didn't like, I'd then have to wait and paint a few coats over it to get it back to white so everything was even. Second, as you can tell by the light in this video, I've got a really big, bright, lovely window just here. And this side of the room is going to be incredibly dark. So the way the color looks at different times of day is gonna be different on the wall. So without painting the whole wall, how do you fix that? Answer, a lovely sheet of MDF gives you the surface area and I can move my three short list of paints into different lights so that the boss over a couple of days at different times of day can choose which ones you wanted. At the end of the day, we actually went for this color, but 
in this finish. So it is a really lovely flexible option and when you're ready to paint, your wall isn't damaged. Doing stuff like this also gives you the chance to test that undercoat I was just talking about. Up the top, I've got the white, down the bottom, I had the gray. And effectively, you can see a bit of the gray there, we determined with the paint we're choosing, it isn't gonna make much of a difference, but still a good experiment. One last thing I'll say on testing your paint is that it always goes on brighter and lighter than what the final dry color is. I mean, look at that, you wouldn't think that it's gonna dry out to that lovely midnight or black sea blue. How much paint do you need for a wall? Well, this year I see is a fairly average apartment size bedroom wall and it's about nine to 10 square meters. This says here that the paint coverage is going to be 27-ish square meters, which gives me pretty much bang on what I'm gonna need for three coats. Cutting it fine, but I'll get there. I'm gonna be using the fancy drill stirrer. Uh, do be very careful with these, they can splash the paint around. Go slow to start. Okay, cutting in. The first thing you usually do with a single wall like this, and you want a couple of inches, you know, 10, 15 centimeters, just in from the edge where your roller's not gonna be able to get. The tape protects the bit you don't want to get blue and it will work perfectly well. I don't do it that way. But I am going to use up all the paint on this brush first. And this is why I love this little edging tool. Load it up with some paint just by dipping it into your roller tray. Wheels on this side go along the corner of the thing that you're trying to not paint on. And we roll. And you've got a perfect cut in for a first coat. Now, obviously it does have some disadvantages. If you get little bits like here, I don't have enough space, so I'll need the touch up brush. But if you're really brave, this is where this thing pays for itself. Watch this. Up here, I've got this lovely fresco. It wants to stay white. I don't have any tape and I couldn't be asked putting any up there. Edging tool. And bang. Be very careful not to get paint on your wheels or you are gonna to have to go back and do a tiny bit of touch up. I mean, a little bit of touch up is always gonna be needed, but effectively I can get away with not putting the pesky tape up there and get a really nice sharp edge with this beauty of a thing. I'll put a link to it down below if you wanna pick yourself up one. As much as I love this thing, I'm not gonna use it along the carpet. If you had a hardwood floor, you could probably get away with it, but I would be putting some tape down on that end, I think. Time to load up and slap it on. You don't have to be too careful on this first coat, but the smoother the better. All right, that's most of the first coat on. It looks like a dog's breakfast. My rolling skills are terrible, but trust me and trust the paint, it will come good after two or three coats. The last thing we need to do is get the first coat along the edge of the carpet. Hardwood floor, I could use the shoreline edger. However, I'm gonna to have to do it with a brush the old fashioned way. So we can get our brush from before, take it out of the plastic bag and it should still be good. Lovely. Now a stiff bit of card will work well, but honestly these cost absolutely nothing. What we're trying to do is jam that right down in the carpet line and that will allow us to paint the wall without getting any paint on the carpet. Well, much paint. All right, that's how we cut in, get the first coat on. Believe it or not, that's most of the hard work done. Okay, that's been two hours and the wall is now nice and dry. On the second coat, you can be a little bit more fussy and then on the third coat, you really have to start concentrating on your roller movements to get them nice and smooth so that lovely finish is even across the board. It will polish itself out mostly, just take a bit of care.
onto the third coat and now you really want to start focusing on your rolling technique a little bit better than mine. We're going to do full length rolls up and down to try and even out all the blotchiness. If you've got the extension pole pictured here, your life will be a lot easier. Again, being six foot tall helps. A good tip is to get rid of the blue tape while your last coat is still a little bit damp. That'll help stop it from tearing everything off and leaving little gouges which you'll have to come back and clean up. And just a few hours later with three coats on, we're coming to the end already. Told you this would be quick. And will you look at that, just about out of paint. Tiny bit left for some touch-ups. Glad I didn't buy the 4 litre. Speaking of touch-ups, having a pot of your wall or ceiling white on hand is also very, very useful. Worth the effort to go back and fix these little bloopers. Before we jump in to show the finished product, if you found today's video helpful, then I would encourage you to please subscribe to the channel and join me for my regular woodworking and DIY content. And here is the Porter's Black Sea in eggshell finish at its finest. Looking absolutely schmick. Have to thank Wifey for picking the colour. Such an improvement from that boring white wall. Now I've got to make a new bed. Thanks for joining me. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And I'll catch you next time on Fix-It Fingers Woodworking. Cheers.